In the last stream, we were working on finally crafting a jetpack, and given the resources that we had in the last stream, we went all the way up to the highest tier of jetpack available from the Iron Jetpacks mod, crafting up this emerald jetpack here, which between streams has spent a tremendous amount of time sitting in our charger, and so is now almost full uh, with 44 million redstone flux inside of it, hopefully allowing us to fly around quite a bit in today's episode without having to worry about running out of juice. We also set up this much larger smeltery and brought over this blaze spawner from the nether to allow us to automatically spawn blazers that then get dropped down into the smeltery. And so long as the smeltery has fuel, which it currently does not, uh, those blazers get melted down into blazing blood. In the last stream, we used that blazing blood uh, to allow us to make hepatizen, which is a very powerful resource that allowed us to make this powerful hepatizen hammer, which can now mine very quickly in a three by three area. And going forward, having this blazing blood is also going to be super useful because it allows us to make things like blaze rods. So the blaze rods here uh, can be crafted. All we have to do is get a rod cast and then pull the blazing blood over it. 100 millibuckets of blazing blood equals one blaze rod. And as of right now, we have got 16,510 millibuckets of blazing blood. So quite a lot of blaze rods and therefore blaze powder uh, worth of blaze blood in the smeltery here. And that is going to come in particularly useful in today's stream, because in today's stream, I would like to craft um, a couple of items, such as uh, the Ender Chest, which I'm going to go ahead and bookmark here from the Ender Chests mod, um, as well as the Ender Tank, also from the Ender Chests mod. Both of these do require a fair number of blaze rods. Also looking forward, I think we do have the Flux Networks mod installed. We do. Uh, this is a super nifty mod that allows you to wirelessly transfer power around your base so you can generate power uh, in one place right now we're generating all of our power using a water wheel from immersive engineering but uh, later on down the line we're going to generate even more power from even more machines and multi-blocks and when we do getting that power to other parts of the base uh, isn't super tricky we could use energy cable if we really wanted to but going forward especially as we add more power sources and especially as we add more power users like more machines that are going to use all of that power uh, it's a lot easier just to place down uh, flux plugs and flux points everywhere to wirelessly move that power around and as you may have guessed in order to do that uh, we need blaze powder what i want to work on in today's stream is i would like to work on at least to begin with, automating Obsidian, because again, if we're going to get into Flux Networks at some point, having that Obsidian available is going to be very useful to us. Uh, but also just generally, Obsidian um, is a block that's used fairly regularly and is also a block that's fairly tedious for us to get at the moment. We can make it in the smeltery, which is what we did in the last stream. And that's definitely faster than utilizing the lava ritual from Blood Magic that we were using previously, uh, but it's still a bit slow and it's still very manual. And so trying to automate that, I think is going to save us a significant amount of time in the future. But before we get into any of that, um, I'm gonna talk about the elephant in the room. And that is that between streams, I've gone ahead and done a bit of work on the base. For the most part, all I've done is kind of replace the pre-existing stone that uh, lined our walls with seared bricks. Uh, the seared bricks, of course, we get from seared stone, which we have a very large amount of over here. We've got 16,400 seared stone uh, because we put in this tier five storage upgrade. In fact, um, one thing people did point out in the YouTube comments is that I didn't put a void upgrade into this uh, drawer here. And so in fact, uh, whilst we do have 16,000 seared stone here, we actually got so much seared stone that it's backing up in these other drawers as well. And uh, so that's another reason why we should look at getting automated obsidian. Once we have automated obsidian, making these void upgrades become significantly easier and we can begin putting them into all of our storage drawers so that we don't start to back up on resources. Again, over here, because it's been such a long time since the, uh, the last stream, uh, we did start to back up on redstone and coal. I've put a void upgrade in there. Um, I think eventually we're going to start backing up on uh, diamonds and emeralds as well. And I think clay is also, yeah, one that we did start backing up on. I have put a, a tier five storage upgrade in it for the time being, which is kind of mitigating the problem, but eventually we're still going to run into the same issue where this will fill up and it will start clogging up our create system over here. Uh, you'll see right here, things are starting to back up as per usual. That's because right now there's nowhere for things like the excess seared stone to go. But uh, back to the base redesign, uh, basically we've used seared stone throughout the entirety of the base. Uh, this is the same block used to make the smeltery. Uh, you can use it perfectly safely uh, as a building block for the base. And it's also super easy to make, especially if you've automated the uh, 
stone situation like we have because all you have to do is take seared stone drop it in the bench saw click here and boom you got a stack of seared bricks which is very nice indeed uh, what i've also gone ahead and done is place down uh, some dark oak planks uh, but these are not the regular dark oak planks these are from chisel as you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen there and uh, basically for those who don't know uh, a chisel is super easy to make it's one stick and one iron once you have a chisel what you can do is you can grab uh, for example, some dark oak planks, uh, really any building block in the game, or most building blocks, I should say. Uh, and if you right-click with the chisel in your hand, you can place the dark oak planks into this slot on the left, and then it gives you a bunch of options for different types of that same block that you can then use to build with. Uh, so the one we went with is, I believe, this one over here, the dark oak planks encased planks, which I think look quite nice. They do also connect together and look pretty cool. Um, I do also like the look of the uh, encased smooth planks. I think these look pretty nice um, as well, but I decided to go with the... Uh, the regular non-smooth version for this base and then the walls are basically the exact same thing as well uh, these are regular minecraft bricks that have been run through the chisel uh, do i have any bricks left over i do i've got a bunch of them uh, so if i quickly grab just one of those and again put that into the chisel like so you'll see again there are a bunch of different brick designs that you can choose from the one that i have chosen is this one here the encased brick which I think looks quite nice. Again, it does connect to form a connected texture, which I think looks quite nice. I'm not super keen on how it looks on this side. Like right now, I've not done as much uh, work on like this room and uh, the room over there. So I don't think it looks quite as good on this side of the wall, but uh, it's a work in progress in the future. We can always change that. And then up at the top here, what I did between streams is I headed through to the nether, uh, found some glowstone, brought that glowstone back. And again, just like with everything else, if you craft the uh, glowstone into a block, like so, you can then drop it into the chisel, and again, you have a ton of options for different designs that you can use around the base. I quite like these ones here. These, again, are the encased brick versions of the glowstone, uh, which I think look quite nice, and also uh, light up the base a little bit as well. Over on this side, this is a new side of the base. Previously, uh, these little doors led down to the nether portal. Um, I've kind of gotten rid of that for the time being. And so over here, we have our water wheel, which I have moved. It's no longer over by the create stuff. It's over in its own little hole. Um, I've also, for symmetry's sake, set up this other hole over here for another water wheel in the future. Uh, we have our charger, which has been charging our jetpack. And then we have our garden cloche making hemp. We've got our blast furnace and our coke oven. Uh, the sink there, of course, providing unlimited water to the garden cloche and then finally chat i think the only other thing that i've changed between streams is the size of this room down here so uh, what i've gone ahead and done is made this room even larger and i've put down the outline of what eventually will be a tier 5 altar so uh, right now we've got a tier 3 altar with uh, these runes here if we add runes into this line kind of this ring of uh, dark cobblestone around the outside that would turn it to a tier 4 blood altar and then if we add runes to this line around the outside um, as well as i believe as some beacons that will turn it into a tier 5 altar the reason i did that is i didn't want to start expanding this lower level of the base uh, in such a way that it was going to limit how big our altar could get and so what i did is i quickly checked um what the highest tier of altar we need is and it turns out there is one crafting recipe this one right here that requires a tier 5 altar and so eventually if we're going to make a creative fluid tank which is a quest right down here in the challenge quest line if we're going to complete this quest we are going to have to have eventually a tier 5 altar and so i've outlined this just so we know where that's going to go in the future and then of course over here is where that nether portal was again this is definitely an area that in the future is going to need some work we'll probably end up moving that nether portal and probably end up getting rid of this uh, little patch of grass as well but for the time being uh, that is fine where it is and i think that's basically everything that i've done in terms of base redesigning and so again the plan for today's stream at least initially is going to be to automate the production of obsidian now in order to do that we're first going to have to get an unlimited source of lava and thankfully that is where this guy right here the hose pulley comes into play so if we hold that w here we can ponder the hose pulley it says hose pulleys can be used to fill or drain large bodies of fluid with the kinetic input the height of the pulley's hose can be controlled so you can move the hose up and down the pulley retracts when the input rotation is inverted on the opposite side pipes can be connected attached pipe networks can either provide fluid to the hose or pull from it draining the pool instead so we can use this to drain fluid from a given area the best part about the hose pulley though is that the way that the create mod is coded if a body of fluid is greater than 10,000 blocks then the hose pulley will treat it as an infinite source 
So if you had a body of water that was 10,000 blocks, which sounds like a lot, but it's a 22 by 22 by 22 block area. So if you built a cube that was 22 wide, 22 tall, and 22 deep, filled it with water, and then put the hose pulley on top, the hose pulley would treat that as an unlimited source of water, and it wouldn't actually start pulling the water, it would just leave it where it was and provide you with infinite water. The best part about this is that it works for any fluid. And so what we can do here is we can take this hose pulley, place it down over a massive body of lava in the nether, and then at that point we essentially have an unlimited source of lava that we can then pull back to the overworld using these ender tanks here, which work in the exact same way as ender chests, but they can transfer fluids, and we can pull that lava bank through to the overworld and use it however we like, for example, to automate the production of obsidian. So that's the plan. In order to make this hose pulley, we need one copper casing, one dried kelp, one fluid pipe, one shaft, and then one copper sheet. I think we have everything here apart from the copper sheet. Never mind, it's been a little while, Isaac. You don't have any of this stuff, uh, especially the copper sheets. And so I think what we'll do real quick is we'll grab the mechanical press and we'll also grab uh, maybe a stack of copper. So I think for now, if we just temporarily kind of tap in to this line, and then maybe do something like this. We'll change this again with another vertical gearbox and then maybe put our press like there. At that point, we should be able to make some uh, some copper plates, albeit somewhat slowly. Eventually, it is going to be in our best interest to probably set up a dedicated area for this, potentially with its own dedicated speed controller so that we can control the speed at which this happens and hopefully make it just a little bit faster. Um, obviously, right now, this is fairly slow. Thankfully, we don't really need uh, that many copper sheets. I'll leave those there for now so we can make even more of them. We do have over a thousand copper in the system, so it's not really uh, too big of a deal if we can make too many sheets here. So boom, there is the copper casing. And with one more copper sheet, which I'm hoping we have over here, we do indeed. That's going to get us the hose pulley. Nice. So we'll take that through to the nether. For the time being, we might just take the, uh, the old hand crank to show how it works, although I do have plans for a better uh, source of power that we will set up in today's stream to power the hose poly and hopefully get us quite a large amount of lava. We are also going to need an actual pump because again, the hose poly doesn't actually do anything on its own. We do need a mechanical pump um, with it in order to actually do anything. So we'll take one of these as well. And then if we're gonna make the ender tank here, we need four blaze rods, one ender pearl, one bucket, one of any color wool, it shows gray there, but any color will work. It will just change the color on the, uh, the ender tank and then two obsidian. So again, in terms of making blaze rods, that should not be too difficult for us to do whatsoever. Um, we don't have a rod cast. However, we can make one using a, uh, a simple stick uh, and then some gold. So if we take some gold and throw that into the smelter, which currently doesn't have any fuel, although I do think if we were to uh, temporarily get rid of this uh, bucket of water we have here, and again, we can actually just get rid of that entirely because we do have our water sigil and we have a sink. So if we need more water, uh, we can do that, no problem. Um, I think we can just do something like this for now to fill this back up with blazing blood. Good stuff. And then from there, what we should be able to do, as per usual, is get a little bit of gold, drop that gold into the old smeltery here. And once that's smelted, we can pull that out over a regular Minecraft stick. like so, and that will get us a rod cast, at which point, if we move the blazing blood to the bottom of the smeltery, we can extract blaze rods. Nice. So I'll extract quite a few of these. We are going to need uh, two ender tanks, and uh, or at least two ender tanks, and at least two ender chests, one for the overworld and one for the nether of each. Each one of these uh, does require, I believe, four blaze rods. So we need four uh, for each ender tank and then four for each ender chest. On top of that, the ender chest requires an ender pouch, which requires an eye of ender, so it requires some blaze powder as well. So I think I will go for about 20 blaze rods here. So there are our 20 blaze rods, good stuff. And we also got an advancement there for making those blaze rods. And I think at this point, the only thing we're missing now in terms of making these uh, ender tanks and ender chests here is obsidian. We need quite a bit of obsidian. And so I think once again, what we are gonna have to do here is either head on down here and uh, use this source, which we could do, uh, but that does require life points, so we'd have to do some more zombie killing, uh, which is a bit of a pain. I think alternatively, while we don't have any crazy big tanks, I think what we could do 
as a bit of a janky way of, of kind of getting around it for now, is we could make some seared fuel, uh, fuel tanks, the ones you normally use for uh, a smeltery. Uh, and again, the seared bricks here, super easy to make. All we have to do is uh, take our seared stone over to the old bench saw here, and then you can just craft those directly into seared bricks and get a ton of them. But uh, the idea here is that we could go ahead and craft up uh, maybe a few of these. And by a few, I don't quite mean 10. I mean, maybe like four. So each one of these can hold 4,000 millibuckets, aka four buckets worth of fluid. And the idea here is that we could take these, place these down in the nether, fill them up using a bucket um, with lava, and then bring back 16 buckets of lava to the overworld, which we could then put in the smeltery. Um, people are telling me though in the Twitch chat that that might be a silly idea. Also, real quick, uh, there is this trash can icon uh, that's at the bottom of the inventory. You can move this around, by the way, as well. Just click on it and drag it. You can place it wherever you like. It even moves around JI uh, if you'd like. But uh, essentially, you can put items in here. And the way it works is that any item you put in there will stay there until you put another item on top of it. So if you put, uh, for example, I, I don't think this will work because they just... Oh, no, it did work. Okay, there we go. So you can see here, we just deleted those 56 seared brick. We deleted those two bricks. And then I could do this. We'll delete those. And then you could take these back out. So if you want to delete something, like we don't need all these seared bricks and they're just going to clog up our uh, storage system, we can put them in there, you know, quickly delete them and they're gone. The nice thing about them not getting deleted right away is that if you put something in by accident, like these copper ingots, you can just take them right back out again. It's only when you put the next item in that they actually get deleted. So uh, just a, a heads up there. But uh, people in the Twitch chat are telling me that uh, we don't actually need these seared fuel tanks. Instead, what we can potentially use is this guy right here, the tank from the tank null mod, which I assume works in a fairly similar way to the dink. And again, there are multiple tiers here, starting out with the basic that can hold 4,000 millibuckets, moving up to tier two that can hold 16,000, and then all the way up to tier seven that can hold uh, the maximum possible number in Minecraft, which is just over 2 billion uh, millibuckets of any given fluid. And it doesn't look particularly difficult to make. It's eight buckets with one block of coal. Uh, right now we've got two buckets, but thankfully we can make one, two, three, four, five, six of those nice and easily. And of course, a block of coal, not going to be a problem either. We've got 37,000 coal in the system. Boom, there is our tank one. Upgrading that to a tank two is just nine blocks of redstone. Again, not going to be a problem for us whatsoever. And boom, there is our tank two. We could potentially even upgrade it to a tank three here. We do have a little bit of gold. I'm a little cautious on using our gold. We have a lot less gold than we have of anything else. The reason for that is that you don't really get much gold from the uh, the system we have here. Whenever you break uh, stone or cobblestone, you don't get a lot of gold. The way that I believe we're supposed to get gold is via nether gold ore. So much like the generator that we currently have that's making uh, stone for us, you can set up this generator right here with lava on one side, blue ice on the other, and soul soil at the bottom. And if we click here at the top show all recipes, you'll see that if you do that and set up a block breaker, it will generate basalt, blackstone, netherrack, nether quartz, gold ore, and ancient debris, uh, as well as cobalt ore as well. So uh, I think this is definitely something we are going to want to set up, potentially in the next stream. And not only is it going to give us a more consistent supply of gold, and therefore more gold to work with overall, it's also going to give us ancient debris, which we can then, of course, use to make netherite, which is going to allow us to upgrade a bunch of stuff, uh, including our furnace right here, to a potentially higher tier. But I'm getting ahead of myself for now. I think we'll stick with the uh, tier two tank two. I think 16 buckets is more than enough. I am being told that we can use this just like a bucket. So I'm hoping that what we can do here is just head on through uh, to the nether, right click on a bunch of lava, pick up 16 buckets worth, bring that back and then place those 16 buckets into the smeltery with some water from our sink to generate 16 blocks of obsidian that we can then pull out and use in the crafting of our tanks. Okay, so it looks like by default, if you go to options, controls, type in tank, click category, uh, the mode, the, the default key binding here is O. So if you press O while holding the uh, the tank, it opens up this menu right here. Uh, right now, we can set it to empty or not, smart placing or not, or sponge. So I don't know if we necessarily have to, like, put, like, maybe put a bucket of lava into here to allow it to, uh, to start picking lava up. Oh, never mind. If you put it on sponge mode, it, it instantly starts picking up all of the fluid that's around you. Okay, interesting. All right, I'll turn that off and I'll put it back on emptying mode now. I assume on emptying mode, I can maybe right click to get rid of it. Also, it shows that there are five tanks, each full of 16 buckets worth of lava. That is a lot of lava. Uh, the question now is, can we 
actually get that lava out. I have to assume there is a way to get it out of the, the node without, like, undoing sponge mode and just placing lava down all around us. But let's quickly head back and see if we can't get this into, uh, into the system. So apparently we can't just right-click the lava into the smell tray, even if we do set it uh, to emptying mode. Like, that's not possible. It'll just place the lava down in front of the smell tray. Uh, so there are two ways we could do this. We can either place the lava just down on the ground and then bucket it into the smell tray. Uh, that's one way. Alternatively, uh, there's also a, uh, a dock here from the, the tank of null mod that we can use. And essentially what this allows us to do is we can place the, the tank, this guy here, into the dock and then use pipes to extract the lava out of the dock and into the smell tray. Um, all it takes to make this, by the way, is just eight uh, white concrete. And of course, all we need for the white concrete is some sand, some gravel, and some white dye, all of which we have. I'm fairly certain that we've got a little bit of bone meal lying around, which we can, of course, craft into that white dye. And boom, that gets us the eight white concrete powder. And at that point, if we quickly grab a bucket of water, we can just do something like this. And real quick, we'll pick that up. We'll pick these up. And we'll do the same again. One, two, three, four. And boom. And that should be everything that we need to craft up our tank dock. I'm hopeful that we do still have some fluid pipes. We do. We've got 15 left from the pipe spot here. We made these, I believe, in the last stream. So if we do something like this, place down the dock over... For now, let's say here. And I think for now, we are also going to have to remove this temporarily so we can pipe into the sea of drain. But then if we take our pipes and we do something like this... And then if we open our backpack and grab the pipe wrench, I do want to temporarily disconnect that, set this to extract. We'll do that in a second. Before we do that, let's put the dank in like that. So now we can see that we've got a ton of lava in the dock here. And so I think if we check in here right now, there is no lava, but nine buckets of water. If we set this uh, to extract by shift right clicking here, that begins to fill up with lava. And you'll see all the lava here is being moved out. Uh, right now, I believe it is moving out at... 50 millibuckets per tick, you can see in the top left there uh, while looking at the extraction. So not particularly fast, uh, but it is moving fairly quickly. And slowly but surely, we are generating uh, molten obsidian. And of course, what we can do is we can put in more water like so. Of course, refilling uh, over by the sink. And in fact, we might even be able to use our sigil. Uh, but again, the sigil does require uh, life essence. And so it's maybe not worth uh, using that for the time being. Uh, again, I'll disconnect this for now. And I'll even move these for now because we don't want to pump all of the lava into there. We only need 18, 20 blocks is probably already more than enough obsidian for what we're going to need for today's stream. And again, the whole idea of today's stream, uh, at least to begin with, is going to be to automate the making of obsidian. So going forward, we shouldn't need to use this system for making obsidian anyway. So I've placed down a lever here to uh, automatically pull the obsidian out just to make this a bit faster and, and to automate it. And uh, we will get rid of that, of course, because I don't want anything else getting pulled out into uh, this basin, but it is going to take a little while uh, to pull all 22 blocks out there. Uh, while we wait for that, we should now, I think, have basically everything that we need to make the ender tank. Uh, the only thing we're missing by the looks of it is uh, a single wool, which we can, of course, craft. And then, boom, boom, and boom, we got our first ender tank. Uh, while we're here, we might as well go ahead and make the second ender tank, which does require just one more bucket. And boom. And then, do we have what it takes to make the ender chest? I think we should do. Uh, we need to make two ender pouches. So that's eight leather and two eyes of ender. As of right now, we have 35 ender pearls. Again, we can get those by just dropping rotten flesh on the ground. We have a random chance of getting the ender pearls. Leather-wise, we can only have four. We do need another four. But again, thankfully, I'm fairly certain we can use our alchemy table here with four rotten flesh, one flint, and the water sigil. So uh, rotten flesh-wise, we have 37. That is something we probably do need to work on. I think we could definitely do with uh, trying to maybe use this spawner here to actually kill some zombies, as well as using them for the blood altar, or at the very least, kill them when we're not using them for the blood altar, so we can start to get a backlog of rotten flesh, as well as potentially some other mob drops as well. Um, for now, though, we just need one piece of flint. I'm fairly certain that I have my water sigil in my backpack, I do indeed. So if we drop all of those into here, and boom, we get the other four leather that we need. For now, we can go ahead and stick some of this stuff back into our, uh, our backpack here. We're still making obsidian over there, which is fantastic. Over here, we should be able to make two eyes of ender. 
Oh, of course, we need Blaze Powder first. Uh, right now, we only have Blaze Rods. Uh, Blaze Powder, we can get by uh, just crafting the Blaze Rods down. We could, of course, crush them, and I think that does get us um, a slightly better return on investment. But for the time being, given how easy it is for us to get Blaze Rods, I don't really think it's worth spending the extra time uh, for that extra efficiency. Instead, we can go one and two, get two Ender Pouches, and then we can go uh, after we craft two more wool. And of course, after we get a bit more obsidian from our hopper here. We can go one and two. And so these two together should allow us to transfer both fluids and items to and from the nether. Nice. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off again, just so we don't pull everything else out. Um, and we can always come back to this in the future if we need more obsidian. Uh, for now, though, let's head on through to the nether and see if we can't set up uh, the basic system that we're going to use to generate unlimited lava. So here in the nether, we've uh, landed fairly close to the lava. Um, our portal is, uh, is just up uh, over there. So the idea here is that uh, if we turn on hover mode real quick on the jetpack, uh, we can maybe do something like this. It doesn't matter where the uh, the pulley goes. Or it doesn't. I should say it doesn't matter necessarily if the pulley is um, a few blocks above where you're wanting to work. That's completely fine. Um, and in fact, what I will do here is I will get a few more bits of netherrack. And I'll put the pulley like right here. And then we'll get rid of this bit underneath. So with this down, if we put the hand crank here... And if we put, let's say, um, a pipe here, and I think we need the pump. I'm pretty sure the pump is required uh, in order for this to work. We'll put that down, uh, ideally facing upwards, connected to the fluid pipe. Although, actually, I guess we could probably just do something like this and then have uh, the ender tank on the end like this. Um, again, I didn't want that down sideways, but this is completely fine. It doesn't matter which way down the ender tank goes. Uh, normally, it goes down like this, standing up, but I kind of dig it on its side like that. Now, I believe that uh, what we can do here, if we quickly head on back uh, to our base, is we should be able to right-click a diamond onto our ender tanks and ender chests to lock them so that only we can access them. Basically, nobody else on the server can use these ender tanks um, or these ender chests. Basically, once we've got four diamonds, I believe what we can do, if we shift right-click the diamond on here, and you'll see now that in the top left, it says gaming on caffeine. So it's linked to me as a player. Like over here, this one uh, says public use in the top left there, um, whereas that one is now linked to me. So only I uh, can use that. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, unless it's different in this mod, which I don't think it is, um, normally you can dye uh, these three rings here. So you can uh, right-click dyes onto the rings to change the frequency of the end tank. So right now we have um, white, white, white. The, as the three rings. If I got a different set of ender tanks that I wanted to use for, say, water, um, I could have blue, blue, blue. I'd use some blue dye on them, I'd dye the rings blue, and then those two would connect and they wouldn't interfere with the other ender tanks that we have. For now, that's not really something we have to worry about. Um, all we want to do is make sure that our ender tanks and ender uh, chests have a diamond on them so that they are locked to me. And so now what we want to do over here is we need to use the crank to lower the pulley into the lava, which shouldn't take too long. Um, I am going to put my goggles back on my engineer's goggles that is from create and that should tell us eventually we might have to give this some uh, some power before it does uh, but it should tell us i think when this is going to act as an unlimited source of of lava real quick let's also turn hover mode on and let's do something like this just to make sure i didn't want to do that uh, but we'll do something like this just to make sure i don't lose this uh, crank when i uh, shift right click to break it there we go so again you don't need to use the crank directly on the hose that only moves the uh, the pulley up and down what we want to do is we want to use the crank uh, to turn this mechanical pump and that's what's actually going to trigger the uh, the hose pulley to pull the lava up so here we want to put down our cogwheel like so and for now if we take our hand crank and we begin spinning that hand crank what we should hopefully see if this is working correctly, is we should see lava begin to make its way up through the hose pulley and into here. Now, you'll notice right now that's not happening, and I think that's because this is the wrong way around. Can I right-click these to, to like make them transparent? I totally can. Nice. Look at that. Okay, it is working, albeit very, 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 very slowly. 
And you'll see here uh, that we have done this correctly because the hose pulley, when we look at it with our goggles on, says bottomless supply. So this will never run out. It says the target body of fluid is considered infinite. So it's not actually going to pull the lava. Uh, it's not going to get rid of any blocks. It's just going to produce infinite lava so long as we keep providing uh, this pump here with kinetic energy. Uh, if we look, though, in the tank, if we hold shift, you'll see that we've managed to gather a, a whopping 144 millibuckets, which is about one tenth of a bucket worth of lava, which is not a particularly sizable amount of lava and ideally we would like to be generating lava significantly faster than this so that we can use it not only for generating obsidian but also uh, for other endeavors in the future and so what i think we're going to do is i think we're going to try and set up a new kind of power source a new kinetic uh, stress generator here in the nether and i think our best option for that is going to be the flywheel this guy right here uh, in combination with the uh, the furnace generator Okay, so in um, what turns out to be potentially a, a, a boringly easy turn of events, um, it turns out that you don't have to use create at all. Uh, and in fact, what you can do is uh, you can just take the uh, the fluid pipes, and I've done this in a weird way because I didn't want to, uh, I didn't know if it was going to work. But uh, now that we know that it works, I guess I can get rid of, of some of these excess pipes here. We don't need all of these uh, lying around if we just do something like this. And um, it turns out that you can just use the uh, the pipes, fluid pipes, and this basically just acts as an infinite source of lava. So if you just do this, and uh, again, make sure that, uh, I'll do it again, just to show you guys uh, how it works. But if you put this down and then take the uh, the pipe, shift right click to set it to extract. So I'll know it's working when it says transferring 50 millibuckets per tick in the top left there. And uh, that works. That filled up this tank uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the way the pipes from pipes work uh, is uh, if we go to at pipes, uh, you can put in these uh, upgrades that start with basic and gold all the way up to ultimate. And these will increase the speed at which this pipe extracts. So right now it's only doing 50 millibuckets per tick. Uh, there are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft, which means this is doing about a bucket per second, which is already quite fast. Uh, but if we wanted to, we could add uh, upgrades to this to make it even faster. And uh, really these upgrades are not too expensive. The basic upgrade is just some iron and some redstone. Uh, the more the improved upgrade is just uh, the same, but with gold and redstone, and then diamonds and redstone, and then netherite and redstone. And there's also a creative one, which we can't craft. But uh, but yeah, so if you want to make this faster, you can do that. For now, though, we can just head back through uh, to our base. I was planning on setting up a new create power source over here, but it turns out that is entirely useless. And But we can always save that create power source for... Um, for, for the future, we, we're, we're almost certainly going to want to replace the uh, the windmill that we currently have uh, in our base. Chat is making a good point that I do need to make sure that I uh, both claim and chunk load this. If we uh, click on our Feed the Beast chunks here, we can go to Claim Chunks, and we can go ahead and claim these here. Um, right now, I can't force load any of these, uh, but between streams, I will go ahead and change that so that I can make sure this uh, chunk here uh, that we're in. And uh, if you're not sure, by the way, if you press F3G, it will show you the chunk boundaries. You'll see we've built this right on the edge of one of these chunks. But uh, basically, if we look at the map again, this chunk right here is the one that we're in. We want to make sure this chunk really is the only one that needs to be claimed. And we want to make sure that this chunk here is loaded. So these, uh, you know, this 16 by 16 uh, block area is the one that needs to stay loaded all of the time. And that will make sure that even when we're not here in the nether, uh, that we consistently get a supply of lava. And again, you can press F3 and G to get rid of those chunk borders. Back here in the overworld, we actually don't need these uh, ender chests now. We can come back to those in the future. I was going to use the ender chests uh, for something else. Again, I was going to not use the pipes mod. Uh, initially, I had a plan to set up a different source of power in the uh, nether to actually generate kinetic stress units that we could then use uh, to power the, the pump. But it turns out we don't need the pump. We don't need any of that. Uh, we can just use the pipes mod. So now all we have to do is put down our ender tank. Right now, you'll see that this is full of creosote oil. That's because somebody else on the server um, has used this frequency and not made it private, that's fine. If we shift right click a diamond on it, you'll see that this tank now is full of lava that we can use however we like. Now, my plan here is to use the fluid outlet, which is this guy here from Immersive Engineering, uh, as a way of automating the production of lava. Because what we can do with the fluid outlet is we can pump lava into it, and then it will automatically place those lava blocks down um, on any side that you set to place lava blocks down. Uh, we can then, of course, have water nearby and use block breakers to automatically break the obsidian that is generated, and then collect the obsidian in a storage drawer. The only thing we're missing here is some iron sheets. Thankfully, once again, we did set up our metal press over here earlier on in the stream, and so if we just do something like that, we should slowly but surely start to generate a couple of sheets. Uh, while we wait for that, uh, let's go ahead and see if we don't have what it takes uh, to make a couple of these small block breakers. I think we'll use the same ones 
that we used earlier. Uh, these are easy enough to make. They're made with metal bars, iron pickaxes, observers, and a block of redstone. The metal bars quite simply just made with some iron. Block of redstone, obviously super easy. I think we'll make four of these. I think that's the uh, kind of the optimal situation here. So if we make four iron pickaxes, one, two, three, and four, I would put them in the system, but I think our system is a little bit full right now. One, two, three, and four observers, and that should give us everything we need for one, two, three, four block breakers. Back over here, our plates are done. Fantastic. So we should be able to make the outlet. We totally can. Boom. And then if we place this down, again, for now we'll place it down like here. And do we have the hammer? We totally do. What we can do here, you'll see if we're looking at it, it says facing side fluid output, opposing side fluid output. At the top here is fluid input. You'll see again, if we look at the top, it says facing side fluid input. You can right click with the hammer to change it to no connection or to change it to an input. So if it looks like this, where you can see through it, it's an output. If it looks like this, it is blocked. If it's like this, it's an input. So by default, if we were to take this and if we were to put uh, some water into that or any fluid into that, I'm going to use water because water is not going to burn my base. But uh, if we were to put water into this, the fluid outlet will release that water on any one of the four sides that are set to output. So if I put water in, which we do have to do with a tank. Again, I think we can do this as janky as, as it is. I think if I do this and this, I don't actually know if you can put water in the, in the, the sea tank, although I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, you totally can. Nice. And then we'll go and we'll set that to extract like that. And once this fills up, it puts down the water. Now, if we were to turn off all of the sides but one, so let's say, for example, we turned off uh, this side by shift by clicking, this side by shift by clicking, uh, and this side by shift by clicking, that should only leave this side here. Oh, no, hold on. That's my bad. Is that doing the opposite side? Oh, it is. I don't know why that feels wrong, but for whatever reason, it's doing the opposite side. That's fine. If we turn off uh, this side, which is actually this side, now this side here is the only side that can output. And so if we once again put the water in, the water should come out of this side. And it does. It just places it down. So the idea here is that what we should be able to do is we should be able to leave all of these sides on. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm, it's my bad. If you right-click, it changes it. If you shift right-click, it changes the opposite. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, but the idea here is that we can leave all four of these sides as outputs. We can have the top as an input. And instead of using water, we can take our ender tank full of lava, have that pump into here, and then as long as we have water down, the lava will automatically turn into obsidian. We can then have block breakers down like this, uh, that are then going to break the obsidian, and then we could have, for example, a hopper underneath the obsidian, or if we wanted to, uh, we could use something like the item collector, um, especially now that we have obsidian being made, or we can make obsidian more easily, uh, something like the item collector is a lot easier, because it can just pick up anything that's generated nearby, and instantly drop it into um, a nearby storage drawer, instead of having a hopper underneath each one, which is fairly slow, we could just get one item collector, or even one advanced item collector, and then use that to collect all of the obsidian, and at that point, we will have automatic obsidian. It's not particularly fast, the block breaker. Um, if I were to go ahead and grab one of these obsidians here and place it down in front of this block breaker, it does do it. If you right-click, I believe it tells you how far through it is. Yeah, it's at 11%, 12%. You know, you can see here it's going up fairly slowly. You can speed this up if you give it power. The trouble is, right now, we're not actually producing much power. We're producing about, I think, 100 redstone flux per take using this water wheel here, which is not a crazy amount of redstone flux. And of course, some of that is being used on our garden cloche. So I think for now, we're going to do it without power. Of course, um, it is passive, so it's going to generate obsidian forever. So eventually, we'll end up with uh, more obsidian than we're going to need. But uh, in the future, if we do find ourselves short of obsidian, we could always add power to these as we get more power uh, to actually make them faster. And there we go. It's done. So I think what we'll do is I'm, I'm actually quite tempted to get rid of this right here, this uh, this ritual that produces lava, because we essentially have, have surpassed that, right? We've got this tank here, which does the same thing, but doesn't require us to kill zombies to get it. And so I think what I might do is uh, temporarily just get rid of this uh, water source block here. Don't put the obsidian down, Isaac. That would be a mistake. And then at that point, if we break this ritual and get rid of this lava, we can use this area here as the area 
that we generate lava in. I am going to make this slightly bigger. Right now it's a 3x3. Three three. I think we're going to be in a much better situation if we make this like a 5x5 five five instead. All right, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to have our fluid outlet in the ground like this. Uh, the idea being that the fluid outlet is going to put lava down here, 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 and here. We're then going to have, of course, our fluid pipe come up out of that, and then we're going to have our ender tank, let's say, right about here, like so. We can then have this extract down into there, and then if we have water above that, so if we do something like this, 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 and this, that should put flowing water where the lava is going to go, and I think if this works as I hope it will, uh, if we set this to extract, that should produce obsidian. And it totally does. Nice, okay. Uh, so now all we need to do is we need to take our small block breaker and get those down in the right places, which are here on the backside of all of the pieces of obsidian. And then the final piece of the puzzle, after we've done that, is to get, oops, the puzzle is to get the item collector. Real quick, I'm going to once again use our trash can slot here to get rid of some of the uh, extra stuff that we don't need to be holding on to, like this uh, granite that we've got a ton of in our system. And uh, the item collector, again, super easy for us to make. Um, I actually think this is completely fine. I don't even think we need the advanced item collector, at least not yet. And then we'll go ahead and make a new storage drawer, like so. And we can drop that down for now. Let's say right about here that should be fine and then we can just put the uh, basic item collector really anywhere around here because the 5x5 five five area is large enough and uh, so long as there's nothing else in there uh, that's going to generate obsidian and if we really want to be safe we can take our draw key lock that to obsidian uh, so that even if we take all of the obsidian out uh, and then do some mining around here it's not going to end up getting filled with any other stuff which is perfect uh, and so now again all we need to do is put down the remainder of our small block breakers, which we might have to rotate. Never mind, that is completely fine. If we put our stone here, we can fill those in as we go. And there we go, we have a very slow, but steady, unlimited obsidian generator uh, that hopefully, by the time we come back for the next stream, is going to have a fair bit more obsidian ready for us to use. Again, we can use that for making more ender chests, more ender tanks, but more importantly, uh, we can use it for getting into flux networks in the future, and also uh, for upgrading uh, more of our storage drawers with void upgrades, which I think is going to be uh, very important. For now, though, uh, the next thing I'd like to work on in today's stream is addressing something that I mentioned a little bit in a previous stream, when we set these storage drawers up, uh, I remember asking the pen creator if they could install uh, the framed drawers mod. And we'll look at this, we now have in the newer versions of Cave Factory, the framed compacting drawers mod. This is a super nifty mod because it allows us to generate custom storage drawers uh, that look, in my opinion, quite a bit nicer than the default storage drawers that we have on our walls right now. Uh, the way these work are, uh, let's say we want to replace these two by two drawers that we have here that can hold four items. Uh, over here, we have basically a framed version of all of the different drawers that we can make. So we want uh, this one right here, the framed drawer two by two. It's made with four chests and five sticks, super easy. And right now it looks pretty bad. But the idea with this is that you can take other blocks and change the appearance. Now, unfortunately, I think because seared brick is like a block used to make the smeltery. I don't think this is going to work. Never mind, it totally does. Nice. Okay, so uh, what you can do is you can place these in your crafting table, and then there are three slots uh, around it that you can use to change how the drawer looks. So, for example, uh, we can make a hideous looking one here. Uh, the back corner, I believe, is the outside edge, so the kind of the back uh, faces of the drawer. Uh, then we have this bottom left slot, which is the front, so like the little slots that the items go into, and then the uh, top right one there is the outer edge. So if I craft that, I can put this down, and I can show you this hideous storage drawer that I have created. Obviously, this looks terrible, right? It looks really bad, but 
it shows what it can do, right? And so now we can use this just like any other storage drawer and we can use it to hold all of our stuff. Uh, so the idea here being that we can get rid of basically all these doors because right now we've got all of this kind of oak wood uh, in a base that otherwise doesn't really have any oak wood in it. And so the idea here is that we can replace basically all of these drawers with custom drawers that look a little bit nicer. The question is, what in the world do I want to replace these with? All right, so a little bit of time later, a little bit of uh, deliberating with the Twitch chat. I think we like this one. It's very simple. Uh, we've got a few options here. We've got the horrible one we made initially. Uh, we've got this one right here, which is uh, seared brick on the sides. Uh, it's dolomite, uh, which is this kind of like marble looking texture here uh, that I quite like the look of. You can uh, craft it in a set of four to get polished dolomite, which uh, is, is quite nice. I quite like this. I kind of dig it. But uh, this one's got dolomite on the edges and then uh, brick on the front. And we went with a very uh, flat brick. So uh, if you just craft four brick together we did something like this throw the brick in and then this tile brick uh, this big tile brick here is the one we used for the front here so it's just basically brick uh, and then we did the same here but without the white edges so this one's just black um seared brick all around and then minecraft brick uh, on the front and then this one which i think is the one we're going to go for is seared brick all around but then dolomite on the front i like this one uh, the white background i think makes it a lot easier to see a lot of the items and i think it looks pretty nice so i think what i'm basically going to do now is replace almost all of these here uh, basically all of these actually with these new colored drawers and uh, you can do the same thing with compacting drawers as well there is a framed uh, compacting drawer option which works in exactly the same way we can put it up here we can put this at the back and then this as the front and then we can replace the uh, pre-existing drawers that we have for things like copper for example with these ones so yeah, after a bunch of uh, deliberating with the Twitch chat, we're going to go with this design here. So now basically all we have to do is kind of move these off, put these in, and begin moving our items over into the new drawers. For things like this that have so many items in them, it might be a lot easier if we get an item pipe from the pipes mod, which I don't think we have at the moment. We don't. Uh, thankfully, they're fairly easy to make. We're just missing some droppers here. And then at that point, we can just put this here. We can move the draw up like that. And then uh, for, for draws like this that have so many items, we are going to have to match the number of storage upgrades. So uh, we're going to have to get three of these uh, tier five storage upgrades, put those in, and then set this to extract. By default, I don't think that's going to be particularly fast. So we're probably going to want to make um, at least a tier one, but maybe a higher tier uh, upgrade, pipe upgrade, to make it even faster. Uh, before we get carried away with ourselves, let's make that one more storage upgrade we'll put that in like so uh, we don't have any glowstone in here so i think that's fine uh, we'll go ahead and we will unlock that with our draw key like so and then if we go ahead and set this to extract uh, by default it's doing four items every 20 ticks which is very very slow <laughs> but it is going uh, if we put in the tier one upgrade that goes to eight items every 15 ticks which is still fairly slow so let's see if we can't upgrade that to an even higher tier we'll go improved and i think we'll go all the way up to the advanced pipe upgrade we've got the diamonds for it so now if we put that in here by the way you just shift right click on the front of that put it in and now it's doing 32 items every five ticks which is uh two stacks per second and now it's moving a little bit faster. Again, this is kind of our worst case scenario. This is the draw that has the most stuff. Most draws just have a couple of items in that we can very easily move um, around. And of course, going forward, we actually don't need these draws here uh, that have ingots in them because all of our ingots are going into compacting draws. People are pointing out that we can also use the, uh, the import cables, I completely forgot, from Simple Storage Network. So we could go ahead and make another set of these. And if we put these down like that, and then just use basic network cable to connect those up, we should be able to start importing like even quicker, just using both of them in conjunction. And again, if we wanted to, we could use the uh, the speed upgrades on those as well. If we uh, quickly steal this stack upgrade with the speed upgrade, we could put both of those in, and hopefully that's gonna start moving those a little bit quicker. Oh yeah, that's definitely going a bit faster. Okay, so quite a while later, and I think we are basically done we can get rid of these uh, make sure that filtered link cable goes back down i didn't mean to break that uh, make sure that's once again set to a lower priority so things go to the draw controller first where possible uh, this does not need to be here we can go ahead and get rid of that and we could of course put our 
speed and stack upgrades back where we got them from. So the stack upgrade was over in here for the nuggets and the speed upgrade was in here. Uh, we do have a slight backlog problem, I think, over here. Not quite sure why, but that should be working as normal. And yeah, so I think it looks a lot nicer with uh, with this. And again, if we put more drawers down anywhere around the base in the future, like over here, we could always replace this one. This one looks a little janky. Um, I do have plans to move this garden cloche and potentially also to move the blast furnace and the coke oven as well. Um, I don't really love this area right now, and we are going to need more base space in the future. Uh, speaking of which, I think next time when we come back, uh, there are a couple of things I want to do. I do want to start working towards getting better power. Um, I think we'll go for the diesel generator from Immersive Engineering. Uh, this is a pretty nifty multi-block. It does require quite the setup. Uh, we have to get a refinery as well as a fermenter and a squeezer. All of these are multi-blocks that are all going to have uh, to go somewhere. Uh, and we're going to have to set all that up. So I think I'll kind of cave down this wall here and build a uh, bigger space behind that for us to build that setup into and that is going to mean that we are going to have to find a new place for the garden cloche when we do so i might replace this with uh, a draw that looks a bit nicer a bit more in theme with this area of the base we can also look of course at setting up that uh blue ice generator the one that's going to allow us uh, to actually start making debris uh, the ancient debris here can be made with the lava and the blue ice blue ice is going to be a bit of a pain to make but i think we can do it um, once we have that uh, we can look at making something like the Rainbow Furnace, which is uh, super nifty. This is an incredibly fast furnace. Uh, it's very expensive, requires eight rainbow plating, which requires one of each uh, furnace, uh, all the way up to the crystal tier here. And then you also need the Rainbow Core, which requires two netherite furnaces, which, of course, is where that ancient debris comes in. Uh, but once we have that, uh, we can start smelting things incredibly quickly, which is going to be incredibly useful. Uh, over here, we do now have 28, a whopping 28 obsidian, uh, but it is automated. And so uh, going forward, we're hopefully not going to have to worry about that too, too much. Uh, speaking of which, uh, over here, there's no void upgrade in there. Now that we have that 28 obsidian, let's quickly grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight obsidian. And we should be able to make an extra void upgrade. Again, we're kind of running out of, uh, of storage space. That is something that we can probably fix with like some organization. Again, there's a lot of seared stone in here that can now be uh, be voided if it's uh, if it needs to be voided. Uh, but there's also refined storage. Right now, we are using the simple storage network mod, and it works all right. But I do think that sooner rather than later, um, I would like to start working on refined storage. Refined storage uh, is a mod that's going to allow us to craft storage disks. And those storage disks can be very big and can store a lot of our items without us having to put down uh, a ton more chests. And there's also uh, advanced auto crafting and better importing and exporting and whatnot with refined storage as well. So we'll probably look at working with that. Uh, we'll probably keep the storage drawers uh, for refined storage because we've already got them and I think they look pretty good. Uh, but uh, yeah, we could definitely replace this bit here, I think, sooner rather than later. And of course, again, once we get a better power up and running, we can then look at using our new obsidian to make flux plugs and flux points from the flux networks mod to start wirelessly transferring power all around the base. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.